been working in this sketchbook lately and enjoying it for modern botanical art, I am actually looking to mix some interesting greens to paint in or to add color to these illustrations of the foliage. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be uh, using some colors from my Ultimate palette. I have swatched them out here on the swatch cards. Let me just put them in the order that they come in the palette. So we've got a few colors like that. And straight up, these are two great greens that can be used as they are from the tube, straight from the tube. Um, oh, I forgot to do the transparency uh, test here, which I'll do in a minute. So, and then of course you can add a couple of the other colors to create more tones. So I can quickly show you um, just a few greens that we have up here. They're super bright as you can see. So I will see if I can mute them down a little bit more and sort of what we can work with. To do that, I have stamped a couple of things. So I have stamped this color wheel and I have stamped this strip of um, strip swatches <laughs> for the lack of a better word. Um, so this element here comes from color palette and I've used this little strip down the bottom to create the swatches here. You can also stamp them this way um, and create fun little swatches here. Just some examples of the things you can do. And the swatch joy. Now from the swatch joy I've used this stamp and then I used pigment light fast and the transparency strip to create these swatches and they are both available including the watercolor set at Alona Creates on Etsy. So let's just quickly do the transparency test together with me and I've got all of these colors swatched out here. None of these colors have any white pigments in them uh, nor do they have any kind of uh, fillers or extenders. They are pure pigment and also they're handmade and they're vegan in case you're new to this channel. So let's get them to dry and then we'll see exactly how the transparency goes because sometimes like in other brands I've noticed as well, you can swatch something and it actually looks quite opaque when it's wet. And then something happens where that opaqueness just goes away when it dries. So we'll see what happens because uh, the key to these watercolors is luminance. They're super luminous. And also, they, um, they're quite transparent. So you'll see that. So the first color was Chartreuse. The second was Conacred and Gold Deep. And now we have Strawberry Velvet, which I designed to be like a wilted strawberry type of color with loads of lovely texture. They're also highly granulating and so they create some really interesting uh, mixes. They also love to pigment separate as well. So we've got this one and this one. So cobalt teal and strawberry well with their pigment separating. As you can see, there's some green patches here amongst the turquoise. Yeah. 
and finally we have green gold deep beautiful color Here we go. So now let's try and make some greens. So let's start with chartreuse and I think what I'm going to do is just use three colors in this color wheel. I'll start with chartreuse. And uh, I will use also cobalt teal because it's kind of, you know, it's got a nice kind of blue green look to it. So we'll add it to our green family. And of course, the green gold deep. So I'm just thinking what order shall I do it in? Uh, Let's go like that. So once I do the double here, I then have four and a single. The reason I have a double is because I find it looks a bit more interesting and it has more of a finished look to it. But of course, the stamp is designed in such a way that if you wanted to use this as a single, you can do it because there's a line through it. And in fact, if you don't want the line to be visible, it's hardly visible with the light colored ink. But if you didn't want it there at all, you just swipe with your finger uh, the ink from there and you won't have any lines at all. So here we, of course, we're not going to have much of a color difference, uh, but I just want to kind of have a nice, bright, saturated, juicy, delicious springy greens going on here to infuse colors through the winter to the dull winter colors that we have at the moment I'm missing all the beautiful foliage and everything so I think this is why I'm kind of craving and you know my love for chartreuse in the last couple of years so we have obviously four areas here to mix and I'm going to add, first of all, a tiny bit of um, cobalt teal. And then we're going to swatch that. So I'm not expecting major changes or color shifts in this color wheel, but what we're going to do in the colors here is just throw a bunch of colors together and see if there's something a bit more unusual we can get. So this is becoming more of an apple green now. If you wanted to push your chartreuse towards a more kind of like, I call it acidic, acidic green. Um, you could do that. If you wanted to warm it up, you're going to have this kind of warmer effect, which you'll see in a second. Personally, I love my chartreuse as it comes out of the tube. I, I <laughs> worked really hard on designing the right right tone of the chartreuse that I love as you're swatching this you can always decide how much you want to add one of the other colors so for instance I would add even more here about there Here we go, and that's lovely. Now we're going to start mixing those two, so I'm going to clean my mixing dish. Okay, so now we're going to start with cobalt teal, and then we're going to add bit by bit green gold deep, just like what we did before. So very little, because sometimes the color can be quite strong, and it pushes it too 
quickly into a direction. Okay, so. Now, cobalt teal is pigment separating, and whatever you're going to mix with cobalt teal, it's going to give you that lovely pigment separation effect where you're going to see speckles of the um, cobalt teal coming through quite beautifully. So, it's a really nice color. And there's quite a bit of granulating properties in the other colors, except for chartreuse. So, chartreuse is probably your most opaque color out of, of them all. Uh, but it also is um, least granulating, so to speak. So this might have been too much, but it's a lovely green, so I'm going to go with it. This is my type of a green. So essentially we have taken the cobalt teal and muted it slightly with the green gold deep. Okay, so I've got two more versions here. So one more. Also another colour I absolutely love. Look at that. Now that's your typical gold green. Except it's not your typical because it's got a gorgeous pigment separation that you can't get off any tube. You would have to mix it yourself. Um, here you just get faster to it because we have three pigments in the green gold deep and we have two pigments in my cobalt teal so it's not a straight up cobalt uh, turquoise which means I already tweaked it a little bit to get it to that interesting color and so once you bring those two together you got some really really interesting mixtures and because these pigments are high quality art is great they're not going to give you mud if they have a lot of pigments in them because usually if the watercolor is not a good quality that's what you would get you get more mud from uh, more pigments that you use okay and now we're going to do the same with green gold deep and chartreuse now we're going to be warming up chartreuse. A little bit of chartreuse to begin with. You might not even see much of it, so might go in a bit stronger. Just because the green gold deep is so so strong. Here we go, that was a good one. You can see we're now infusing that beautiful glow from the chartreuse. In fact, both chartreuse and green gold deep, they all have, they both have that glow from within. So when you bring those two colors together, you get a very luminous, beautiful look without like a fluorescent nuisance and all of that. Um, a nonsense rather. <laughs> Here you will see very subtle changes. So as they are these colors, for my personal botanical art taste, I would use the bright colors for just a little pop of color so I would use them in foliage let me show you what I mean so when I've done illustrations here there's a little bit of that kind of pop of color here and here so this is exactly what I would do with these brighter colors I wouldn't use them throughout the entire leaf because it would look a little bit you know and maybe unnatural or a bit too strong but these colors I would totally use throughout the entire um, leaf or foliage illustration. So these three here, even possibly four, like that. And then the rest, I would infuse the colors into the leaves. So then, 
let me now just kind of mix those colors amongst each other and sort of see what we can get in here. So I'll just randomly be adding a few colors here and there. And let's just go with it. Then we have quinacridone and gold deep. That's going to warm things too much up, but think about autumn. You can have these colors in the leaves in autumn. So technically they're not a green green, but a color that could still nonetheless be used in foliage. Okay, so now let's bring a bit more of the blue so we can go back to a green. And now we get these really complex mixes that are far from mud, but they have a lot of interest and they will be separating. So let me just clip this sketchbook so it's nice and straight on the page, like so. Okay, so in the dish we'll start seeing a lot of interesting pigments kind of pushing away from one another so let's see now it's just going to be fun fun time a bit of this a bit of that trying to stay within uh, possible leaf colors Also, if you want to use all these colors as a base, you can totally do that. And then if you wanted to bring in a couple of other colors like ultramarine blue or anthrone blue, you could do that and see that you can get even more variety. But your base colors would be the super granulating and pigment separating colors. Uh, but then you can, of course, manipulate the tone uh, perhaps slightly stronger into the direction that you want them to go. So I would quite like to add quite a bit more of the chartreuse. And then more of the cobalt teal it's so satisfying mixing these colors in the dish so now you can see we're getting some lovely juicy greens that we didn't have in the color wheel and they're definitely within the green colors so sometimes it takes more than two colors obviously to mix these beauties look at that how lovely it is and even more complex than what we got here because we took this color and all the others at this point Okay, so let's see if we add a bit of the green gold deep at this point, what happens then? Just warms it up. And then let's go in a little bit more with the quinacridone gold deep. It's a beautiful mustard color now. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of interest happening there. It's quite beautiful. And then, let's see, a bit of red into here. 
taking it again to that either like a dry part of the leaf or, um, or when the season hits the leaf and the colors start changing so now I'll try to go back into cobalt teal The idea here is to mix as many varieties of greens as you possibly can. It's a good exercise because it helps you to learn more about your mixing skills and how you control them. Okay, and for the last one, I'll go again more of the cobalt. Let's see, that's a color we don't have yet. So, those are the greens. We should wait for them to dry and then I will show you a close up. So let's have a look. They have mostly dried now. I have waited a good 10, maybe 5, 10 minutes, something like that. So here they are. So hopefully you can pick up on the lovely granulation that's happening around the swatches here. And then as we move down, there is some more here. And basically the catalyst in these pigment separating swatches is cobalt teal. So the more of cobalt teal there is present, the more you would get these beautiful speckles coming through. So again, as we moving closer to cobalt teal, we're getting this beautiful granulation. And as we are still very close here, and slowly moving away from cobalt teal, we're also having these beautiful pigment separations right here. So let's look at chartreuse and a quick way to warm it up and cool it down. So if you want to warm up this chartreuse, go this way. If you want to cool it down, then you go in this direction. So in the next video, I'll probably will be using some of these colors in the botanical illustrations and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.